Hello, Dental A Team listeners. This is Kira Dent, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for being part of my Dental A Team family. I seriously love doing this podcast. I thought I was going to hate it, and I love it. I love it so much because I get to connect with you. I get to hear how this podcast is helping you and your practice be better. So if you have loved this podcast and you are willing to share, I would greatly appreciate if you'll share with your friends, if you'll leave us a review, if you'll give us five stars, anything you can do, just like you guys grow your practices, we're trying to grow this podcast to positively impact the world of dental. This is how we get to grow our Dental 18 family. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the Dental 18 Podcast. We're your hosts, Kira Dent. And Dr. Mark Costas. Mark and I had this crazy idea that maybe we could combine a dentist and a team member's perspective because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. And Dental 18 Podcast was created. I'm a practicing dentist, a multiple practice owner, a dental performance coach, and the founder of the Dental Success Institute. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, biller, office manager, current practice owner, and international dental consultant. Mark and I don't just understand you, we are you. Our goal is to positively impact the world of dentistry by sharing our lessons learned from the road in hundreds of dental offices. Two perspectives, one mission, to help dental professionals reach their full potential. Welcome to the Dental 18 Podcast. Hello, Dental 18 listeners. This is your host, Kira Dent, and I am coming to you car casting. Just finished up with my little sister's graduation. You guys, that's super crazy. My sister just graduated from high school. Super crazy, super exciting. And there are seven siblings in my family. And it was kind of a surreal moment that all seven of us, even though we didn't grow up in California the entire time, but all seven of us graduated from the same high school. So it was kind of fun. It was it was a fun weekend. There were lots and lots of family all around. Um, and now I'm headed back up the hill. So I wanted to dive into podcasting again today. And the topic of discussion that I wanted to go into today was I do uh, a decent amount of office manager and uh, I would say leadership team coaching, just one-on-one over the phone. So for those offices that uh, I realized a lot of doctors have support and they have they have coaches, they have one-on-one coaching, they have consultants that come in, they do their coaching calls with them every single month. And I started realizing that I, I felt that leadership teams and office managers really could utilize and benefit the same thing of having a coach, somebody who's been in their shoes, somebody who's learning. So today's topic is what is the benefit of having an accountability partner and a coach and and how can you do that in your teams? So what I found is when I coach, uh, I was talking to a a girl that I coached the other day. She's the wife of a client um, and she also is the office manager of this practice. And she said, you know, Kara, I'm coming into this and I don't really know what I'm doing. Hey, office managers, treatment coordinators, schedulers, all of us, how many of us really know what we're doing? Okay, fantastic. None of us really know what we're doing. And so having an accountability coach is someone, and, and just even having a coach, why, why do doctors have coaches? Why do business owners have coaches? The reality is I had a friend when I was very first starting the consulting company and he said, Kara, you can, you can, you can figure out from the school of hard knocks, which I think all of us need to go through. Or you can learn from a veteran who's who's kind of learned the ropes. They know what's going on and they can give you pointers and tips that maybe you couldn't see. They give you an angle that you don't you don't have. So you guys all know I have a coach as well. Her name's Tarly Reed. I've talked about her before and she does emotional intelligence coaching. So for me, I utilize her to hold me accountable to living my best life and really helping me get a good balance of work and life because I am so hyper-focused that I'll just dive right into the business and I kind of forget that I have a life outside of the business. So that's what I needed coaching on. And I think the benefit of having a coach is that there's there's somebody who actually will hold me accountable. And so showing up for those calls every week or every other week after I've implemented and having somebody to talk through the struggles, uh, the wins, somebody who, who I know is in my corner and somebody who just has a different angle than I do. So I was thinking about you guys today as I was I was doing a coaching with one of my clients and it, it's crazy cool because in January this client and I we set some intentions. I always have people when they're when they're going to get into coaching with me, we set intentions because intentions are different than goals. 
And also with both of them, I always say goals are stars to guide by, not sticks to beat ourselves with. I got that in therapy one time. You guys, I went to a lot of therapy in my life once upon a time. And my therapist told me, Kira, goals are stars to guide by, not sticks to beat ourselves with. And so when my coach, she was saying, okay, Kira, let's set some intentions. Those are totally different than goals. Intentions are our life. They're they're bigger than goals. It's kind of uh, the example of it would be similar to the ocean as opposed to the raindrops. Raindrops, like those tiny little things that, that create the ocean would be goals. But what is the bigger picture? What are what, what intention do you really want? So, so for me, you guys know 2019, my goal is to just be. And B stands for being balanced and essential and strong. Those are my three things that I want to do. So B, E, and then I added strong because I wanted to be strong this year as well. So be balanced, essential, and strong. Those are my my focuses for 2019. So those would be intentions that I'm setting. Well, how do I become balanced? Then I'd set the smaller goals. This can also tie into like wigs with lead and lag measures, or it can set into your your company, your yearly goals with the quarterly goals as well. So you can see how business also connects to personal life and vice versa. So with this, I have all of my clients start out with intentions. So this client that I was working with, she set the intentions that she wanted to make sure that the dentist was more involved with the the practice. She wanted to grow in her leadership style. And she also wanted to make sure that she was, she was more balanced as well. So it was kind of fun in six months. It's crazy because certain things happened in her life. Um, and this this tends to happen. Sometimes we choose to have life circumstances happen and other times life just kind of forces us to to roll into this. But I found that when we set intentions, intentions tend to come from where we really want to be. So office managers, treatment coordinators, hygienists, think about your intentions at work as well. Where do you want to be at the end of 2019 or 2020 or whatever year you're in? Where do you want to be? What intention? Most most leaders tell me, I want to be a better leader. So, okay, great. That's that's an intention. We want to have better leadership. So how do we get there? Those then become the goals or, or focuses that we focus on weekly, uh, monthly, and making sure that we're really focusing forward on it. And what I found is when people set these intentions and then they show up for their accountability check-ins every single week, every single month, it's crazy the amount of traction. So this client in six months, she's super dedicated. She's very driven. And it's been kind of fun because we'll do we'll do business, so we'll talk about dentistry, but we also talk about life with her on these calls. And in six months, our call just barely her the dentist much more involved. Without even she didn't know when she set this intention, she just knew where she wanted to go. She didn't know. Well, the dentist started taking traction classes. He's involved in EOS, that whole traction model, which I'm obsessed with. You guys know that. He's become a much stronger leader, even without, and she wasn't the one that told him to do this. He figured it out on his own, but the intention was there. And it's crazy because they always say that um, energy is just, or emotion is just energy in motion. And so when you set those attention, you you add emotion, which is just energy in motion. And so we start working towards it. We build momentum and we start to hit these goals. And people always say, well, in six months, she now, um, due to some health reasons and also personally for herself, she's no longer in the practice as often as she was before. She's been able to delegate out. She's hired better people in the practice that are stronger leaders. She's given them better KPIs and she started working on the systems of the practice. That is in six months. And so on our last call, we looked back and we thought, oh my goodness, like, look at what's happened in six months because you were super intentional with your life. You had a coach, you showed up for these accountability calls, and then you put in the hard work to get there. So it wasn't just talk. And I think that that's what I really wanted to impress with all of you is, are you showing up for those accountability check-ins? Are you having somebody that gives you ideas outside of yourself? This can be a team member. You don't have to have a coach. Sometimes it's easier for a coach. For me, I show up to my calls. I put money into these calls. So I better darn well get every penny. I hate wasting money on things that don't, that I, I just hate wasting money. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. And so for me, that's something, but with you, look at yourself. Do you have an accountability check-in, whether it's with yourself, whether it's with somebody else? Do you have that accountability check-in? Do you have your intentions? Do you know where you're going for yourself, for your practice and for your teams? Are those crystal clear? Do you know where you're headed? It doesn't, once again, They're stars to guide by, not sticks to beat ourselves with. So once you set that intention, you might realize, okay, we're going to hit X amount with the company and my teams are going to have these. So for example, we want to have a 10% growth. We want to lower our overhead to 59% and we want to have our operations manual done. 
Those are our intentions. That's where we want to be at the end of the year. Okay, great. Let's break it down by department. So what does that look like for the front office? What does the front office team need to do to help us get there? Well, they can have their operations manual protocols completed by, you know, let's say June. Well, in order to get there by June, we need to break this down so we know what we're doing in January, February, March, April, and May. Then we need to have check-ins. We need to make sure we hold each other accountable. This is something you can do. Office managers, what do you need to do to make sure you lower the overhead, um, that you increase the production of the practice and the operations manual is done by certain, by the end of the year? Break that down, but then have accountability check-ins. I was recently reading Rachel Hollis. You guys, yep, I'm obsessed with her. She's awesome. She's totally empowered and inspired me. I love female entrepreneurs that are just rocking awesome because, hey, guess what? That's who I am and I want to be like her. So I was reading hers and she said, what you need to do is when you're setting these intentions, it's kind of like the start and finish of a race. We know where we're starting and we know where we want to finish. But then we should set mile markers along the way. So we know, are we on track or are we off track? But then there's that accountability piece, the accountability piece of showing up every single week and tracking your progress. But this is hard. Like, let's let's dive down and let's get real specific of how do you actually know you're doing this? So I'll tell you what I personally do and what offices do that I coach. We make sure that every single week we check in, whether it's an email or a phone call, there is a check in. Every single one of them is required to do it. And I am mandatory that if you're going to coach with me, you've got to show up. And I'm not going to force you to show up. You personally are committing that you're going to show up. You're committing to yourself. You're committing to me. And you're committing to the goal, the, the intentions that you're going to show up. So we have accountability check-ins. And there is no judgment. I don't care if you're on track or off track. I have zero. I don't care. What I care more about is that you have integrity to yourself and to me. That when you tell me you're going to show up, you're there. Because I found when people are super intentional and they show up, they actually will hit the goals because they're committed to it. They're going to show up every single week. So having an accountability check-in. Also, I found that at the end of every month, we reevaluate. Are we on track or are we off track for where we want to be for the quarter? A year is so far away. I know where I want to be at the end of the year, but it's so far. So I have to break it down for every quarter. I was reading a book the other day and they say that the human mind tends to fall off track every 90 days, which is why we break it up into quarter. So if we know we're going to fall off every 90 days, we need to set safety marks or guardrails in place for us so we don't fall off track. That's what that's what the check-ins are. And then we reevaluate. Are we getting closer? Are we getting further away? What do we need to do to hit those goals? Did we set actual goals that are measurable? Were we smart with what we were with the, the goals and intentions or do we need to revamp that so that way we can be on track and hit what we're actually aiming for? It's kind of crazy because when I set these intentions with clients, they'll say, Kira, I want to be more balanced. Okay, sweet. Fantastic. Let's start working on that. Or, you know, I really want to have more time with my family or I don't want to be at work all the time. I want to be able to leave work at home at the office when I go home. Beautiful. So I start working on it. But then I start to see that their actions tend to keep going back to that. And I'm like, hey, let's rework your intention. Maybe the intention is you want to be able to crush it while you're at work. But then, hey, you really love figuring out projects and problems and solving those. So let's also create that in your personal life. So that way, when you when you leave work, you want to work on your personal life as well, because it's equally intriguing. That's much more of an intention of these people that they really want to work on, as opposed to saying, like, I want to be balanced or I want to slow down. Because the reality is their actions keep showing they don't really want to slow down. That's not really their intention. But we had to get started somewhere. So I would say start somewhere. And then I want you to work on checking in every single week. If it's with yourself, set an email. I'm obsessed with Boomerang for Gmail. That's my favorite plugin. I am obsessed with this plugin because what it does is it allows me to set reoccurring emails to myself. It also allows me certain things that I need to remember or clients I need to follow up with. It will Boomerang. Go back to childhood. Remember those Boomerangs that if you're really good, which I never was, it never came back to me. So I don't know why these toys existed. But if you're really good, the Boomerang, you could throw it out and it would come back to you. So I love this because I get to set up recurring emails to myself. So they'll come in every single week of Kira, this is your check-in time. Check in with yourself. What were your intentions? What were your goals? And how did you do? Then I also, once a month, it's, we've got to evaluate, evaluate where you are. For me, guys, I'm not super committed to myself and I just know that's who I am. I don't do well when I only have myself to stay accountable to, which is super sad. I wish that I was more accountable. But I've also accepted I need an accountability coach. I need a partner that I can count on. And I have certain friends in my life that are super awesome and they'll be there for me and they're not going to let me fall. Others, 
they fall off the bandwagon just as quickly as I do. And I found they're not the best one for me to stay accountable with. So whatever it is, find someone. And it might just be for these 90 days. It might be somebody else. If it's in your office that you're doing, set accountability check-in partners where you both hold each other accountable. It's crazy because all my offices, the top two things that I get asked for is communication and accountability. How do we do those two things? And I found that that's part of human, human nature as well. I don't have all the answers to it, but what I have found is you are much more likely to hit a goal. You're much more likely to succeed when you have somebody that you can check in with, somebody that you know will actually hold you accountable. My clients know I'm going to show up to your calls. I'm going to hold you accountable. You're going to get a weekly email from me. You can count on me for that part. You now, on the other hand, need to show up and do your part. So check in, have that, see where you are. Also, office managers, you can be this person for your team. You can utilize Boomerang so you don't forget to check in with people. Whatever it takes, find the way that works for you and then share it with other people because everybody's looking for ways to help keep each other accountable. Think back to January. How are you doing with those yearly goals that you set for yourself? Do you set those goals? Do you hold strong to them? Maybe break them up and just do quarterly goals. You guys know I had an Easter's New Year's resolution, which I'm, by the way, still doing super great on flossing. So if you didn't hear that episode with flossing, go back to it. I'm still holding strong to that because I said it. I had an intention behind it and I really wanted to improve that. So those things, but I had an accountability partner. I checked in. I made sure I was checking in with myself. So guys, as a wrap up, where are you at? How do you do with your accountability? How do you in your office do accountability? Figure it out. Set your intentions. Where do you want to be? Make sure they're crystal clear. Break them down, set the mile markers like Rachel Hollis talks about. I personally like quarterly and then I break it down to monthly and weekly. Every week, check in. Every month, reevaluate. Is it working? Is it not working? Every quarter, have set benchmarks that are measurable, that do the SMART goals. That they're measurable, they're specific, they're measurable, they're attainable. You can actually achieve these and check in with yourself. And then lastly, have integrity with yourself. Be true to yourself. Be true to your words. Be true to your morals. Because when you can have integrity, when you tell yourself, I'm going to do this, you're going to be much more cautious with the words and the goals and the intentions you set because you know that you're committed to yourself. If you say you're going to work out five times, show up, be there. Because when you can have integrity with yourself, you can have integrity with everyone else and you're able to get that much more movement and traction. All right, Dental team listeners, send us an email. Let us know. I want to hear about your accountability. How are you accountable to yourself? How do you keep your teams accountable? Apply this. Put this into your meetings. Put this into your office. When there's accountability, results are are made. When we track it, we even get better results. So go out, let us know. Level up, Dental team listeners. This is the podcast where you get to level up to a higher version of yourself and your team. Can't wait to catch you guys next time on the Dental team podcast. Thanks for listening. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dental team podcast. Thank you so much for listening and we'll talk to you next time. 